Hey there YouTube, Bart Earth Racing here. So what we're going to be talking about today is efficiency, specifically in the way how we're going to handle the preparation of these exhaust manifolds. Back when Far North Racing was an ongoing race team, one of the things that we were kind of infamous for was we would consistently outperform what conventional wisdom thought we should be doing given our particular setup. And what I mean by that is that there was a conventional wisdom of how fast a car should be given the certain amount of components on it. So a car that had a big 16G turbo on it, for example, was expected to run a certain time. And a car that had a T28 turbo on it was expected to run a certain time. And by varying bits and pieces, sort of stage one, stage two, stage three packages that speed shops like to do, everybody gets a feel for where they expect the car to perform based on its component package. And we were always faster than that. For example, we ran a force performance big 28 turbo, and that was supposed to be a 13 to the 12.7 turbo and we would run 11.99. So we would always outperform what we would expect to do. And the way that we did that was by attention to detail to the little things. And what I'm gonna to do today is we're just gonna go through and talk about how attention to detail on the exhaust manifolds here, we expected to pay some dividends for our build later on. So what we have here is a cast steel exhaust manifold off of one of the cylinder banks of the Stealth. The general shapes and profiles of the ports and everything in here is not bad. We've gone ahead and we've marked the mounting flange with Dicom, and then using a scriber, traced out where the gasket fits. So you can see we've scribed around the inside of the exhaust gasket right in here to show the profile that the gasket takes relative to the port. And you can see there's a little bit of a step in here, meaning that there's room to cut back on a little bit of the material here and match this profile exactly to the exhaust gasket. And if you do that on the head as well, what you get is a smooth transition across this bolted joint so that nothing gets in the way to upset the flow of exhaust through there. So here's a diagram of what I mean by reversion. You can see where the step is, it causes turbulence, and that turbulence chokes off the flow. When you match the pipe though, the exhaust can flow straight through with no obstruction. There isn't a huge absolute value change to flow to this. But it does, the turbulence that comes off of any change in diameter in there, does hurt flow through here. And what we're trying to do is minimize the amount of cylinder to cylinder variation. Here's the turbo side of that same manifold. And you can see they've got a little step in here where they put a, a gasket kind of thing called a flame ring. Uh, it's just a little collar that fits inside there to, to try and prevent gases from leaking out here. Experiences show that you don't need that. So by carefully trimming back this ledge, we can open up this port all the way to the outside of this, which turns out to match the gasket diameter pretty well. So we can get a little bit more flow through here and get rid of this transition step by again, just carefully cutting that back with a die grinder and blending it into the rest of the transition. We can also go ahead and get rid of all this casting flash and these sharp edges just to help make it a little nicer to handle so that when you're moving it around, it, it doesn't cut you up. Uh, same thing with breaking the edges and so on and so forth. A little bit of quality of life cutting in there. So this is typical of what you can do with a cast iron manifold. Just little changes in there to help increase the flow on it and get rid of any variation from cylinder to cylinder. So once again, Mitsubishi manages to surprise me because this manifold is not cast like the other one. This one is actually made of welded steel. I don't know why Mitsubishi chose to cast one side and weld up the second side, but they did, so here we are. And you can see where this was the main runner in here, and they've gone ahead and just assembled this out of welded tubing all along on here. And even more interesting is they've welded it on this side, not this side. So the tubing actually fits through the cuttings inside this cast flange, and they've welded it on this edge here. It's not welded on the other side, which I suspect has something to do with expansion and preventing cracking and what have you. It's full of these little clearance bumps. Uh, these I'm actually not too worried about, because uh, if you've seen the Motor Trend TV Engine Master series, where they do an episode where they beat the crap out of a header, and it turns out these little dents don't affect much. So I'm not worried about these, but there is areas along the flanges that need to be cleaned up. And there's also areas along the inside, which I'm about to show you, which are, are really surprising. So let's have a look at that. 
So here's where it gets really interesting. They've welded this steel tube to this flange on the back side. And there's a significant weld bead overhang over the inside of the tubing all along this edge here. You can see where the scribed line is showing where the exhaust manifold gasket goes. And all this lump is extra weld. And there, there's been no attempt to grind that off or machine it down. They just weld, went and welded it in place and that's good enough. Interesting way to put this thing together and significant intrusion into flow along here that just needs to get cut back and ground off. Because this weld, the penetration portion is, is in this area here, we can't really hog it out this way because the tubing is too thin and, and we, we can't use the thickness of this flange. It's not welded in this area, it's welded in this area. We've got to be careful about how much we take off. But there's a whole lot of flow to be found by taking this out and actually making the port match the inside of the pipe. Here's another diagram showing how this works. So here's the manifold flange with a hole in it. They insert the header pipe inside, and then once it's in that hole, come by and weld it on the back side, and then plane it off with an end mill or something to make it nice and flat. It's that weld there on the back side that extends into the pipe and causes that flow obstruction that we have to get rid of. So what we're going to do is take our die grinder and buzz it out. So here's another Mitsubishi surprise. Inside the number two runner, down in here, right there, that step is the flange for where this has been welded together. So there's almost a good sixteenth of an inch or almost a quarter inch of, air, of steel sticking out into the airstream right there. You see when I run the describer down it catches and it, there's a, quite a lip on that. See that? So that's going to have to get ground out as well because that's actually almost like an anti-reversion cone pointing in the wrong direction. This side of the manifold though shows that we're not going to have everything our own way. Here we've got that same flame ring step that's been machined in there. And on this side, the weld is overhanging. So there's a, there's a step between the inside of the tube and this edge here. So that would be able to blend out. But this flange isn't perfectly centered on the tube. It's shifted over in this direction, which means that this is actually the inside wall of the tube. So if we tried to cut this back to match this flange, we'd actually burn right through the tube and, and we'd be euchred. And there isn't enough room on this side to try and weld it up from the top. So all we're be able to do is just blend out this radius in here and smooth that out as best we can, get rid of some of the dingleberries from the weld splatter that was on there, but we're not going to be able to get rid of this just because it's structural. So here you can see the ports on the head. I've gone ahead and scribed the same line here as well, or we can just drop the gasket on and show it directly. So you can see that there's a little bit of a step on there. And in some cases, there's actually where carbon is built up on the inside because it was meeting the step on the exhaust manifold. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll just carefully blend the port back to match the gasket. So that way we absolutely know that the transition as it comes through the one surface to the other across the bolted interface is perfectly smooth and we don't lose any flow from turbulence at the intersection. We'll do that after we clean the head though. Today we'll just work on the exhaust manifolds. So here's a blast from the past, back from when Sears actually made decent tools. This is a 2.5 amp die grinder. I got it set up with a flame shaped carbide burr on the end, and this does a pretty good job of just shooting through and, and cutting away everything I want to. I do have an air die grinder or a couple of them as well, and I do have the compressor to use it, but uh, I find it's just a little more convenient to use an electrical one, unless I'm doing a lot of different stones and things at the same time, in which case I'll use both. I'll have this one set up with a carbide burr and I'll have the other one set up with a cross buff or something like that. So here's the cast iron manifold post grinding. And it's been opened out here, here, and here to match the gaskets. I just used the carbide burr on here so I can go through with a cartridge roll and, and some finer grit just to clean it up a little bit. But the carbide burr is pretty good just as an overall service finish, so it doesn't need a whole lot of extra work. I've also gone through and ground off all the casting flash here and on the front side as well, just to make it easier to handle so you don't cut yourself. And same thing with all these edges, just run it over and deburred them. So there you go, all nice and opened up. I'm going to drop this in the evapo rust just to knock the rust off, and then I'll finish it up with the cartridge roll 
just to give it that final little bit of finish. And then it gets ceramic coated. So here's the steel manifold after we've managed to hit it with the carbide burr. You can see it's been taken out to match where the gasket trace is or just a little bit shy of it. And we've just gone ahead and trimmed back that overhanging weld and just gently radiused the entry of this so that it comes into where the exhaust gasket is. Same thing here, just a little gentle radius to get it in and trim back all the weld all around in here. So now we've gone ahead and opened up the flow on these three exhaust ports so they should flow a lot closer to what the other side is going to do and should help get rid of some of the cylinder to cylinder variation. That step, that tumble in there only hurts flow and it hurts variation. So probably don't need to hit it with a cartridge roll because that bird did a pretty good job. It's smooth enough. And on top of that, you don't want to be taking away more material than you have to because of the weld is in, is in this section here. So that's pretty good. And to one runaway track, but that's actually cosmetic. It only took away the, it only took away the dike and didn't actually hurt the flange. I'll, I'll have that planed off anyways. So with the exception of this step down inside here, which I need to get a longer burr to be able to reach, we are in good shape for this one. We can now move on to the cast iron one. Turbo outlet side of the cast iron manifold, here we were able to completely eliminate that flame ring. Just went away and cut it out and then radiused the back step on here and here, just so it's a nice smooth transition out of the runner into this. So that worked out pretty nice. Uh, next step after ceramic coating, you can see where it's got some chewed in it. Just run it through the mill and duck it off so it's nice and flat. So there you are. That gives you an idea of the kinds of things you can do for attention to detail to exhaust manifolds and how to prep them to get a little bit more out of them than they came from the factory, especially that steel one where it had the ports choked off so badly with the welds. There you go. Thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>